Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, for the first time ever, I'm going to be canning up some strawberry preserves, strawberry jam, whatever you'd like to call it, and I'm gonna be using a no sugar method. I just like to have this, I would like to have this stuff just kind of preserved in its, you know, non, sugarated form. I don't know what you want to call it. I, I would like to just be able to have, a, a, you know, no added sugars, no added, you know, anything on my shelf so that I can use it uh, throughout the winter, put in oatmeal or whatever I feel like doing with it. So I've never done this before. I've never actually canned up anything to do with strawberries. I've only ever preserved it through dehydrating. And so it took some time to find a recipe, but I finally was able to find one and it was on the Pomona's Universal Pectin website. I will link down below the website where I got this uh, recipe from, but we're just gonna follow it and we're gonna see uh, where it takes us. All right, so I've also never actually canned with this kind of pectin before. I don't typically use pectin. The first thing that we need to do with this recipe is to prepare the calcium water. And basically what you do, this Pompeian Universal Pectin here, it comes with two packets in it. One's the pectin and one, one is calcium. And so what we need to do is you just take a small portion of what is in here and you mix up the calcium water. It says to take a half of a teaspoon of calcium powder in the small packet of your box component box and mix it with a half of a cup of water in a small clear jar with a lid. So we're just gonna use one of our one of our canning jars. So we have a half of a teaspoon here. Let's see if I can get actually get a half a teaspoon out of here. All right. So go. We've got a half of a teaspoon and then we're going to add a half of a cup of water. So now that we have this all mixed up, we're just going to take it and we're going to shake it until it kind of dissolves. And I have a feeling it might take a couple tries, just uh, given that they say to do it at the beginning of the recipe instead of like right when you need it. So we'll probably come back and give us a little shake or two. The next step that we need to do is we need to make sure that our uh, jars and lids are clean. They don't need to be sterilized, but I like to sterilize them, especially if I'm just going to be doing a water bath canning. That's pretty much the only time that I actually sterilize them. Normally I just get them clean. So what we're going to do, we have all these little jelly jars and that's just what the recipe calls for is just the jelly jars. The first step is done. Well, not done. It's going and we have our jars in the side of our pan pot there and they are coming up to a boil. I just started it, so it's gonna be a bit. So we're just doing that while we're doing the next step. So that way we're not gonna waste any time. That's just kind of going in the background. And the way that you sterilize the jars is um, you just put them in water and you bring them up to a boil and you let them boil, like rapid boil. I think it's 20 minutes. It could be 15, but I generally do 20 minutes because I like to just be extra cautious with that. So this isn't a guide on how to sterilize your jars. I just prefer to, even though you don't need to, with if you water bath can for, I think it's at least 10 minutes, then you don't have to. The next step in this recipe is going to be, we need to wash and hull these strawberries. I was watching a recipe from Mary's Nest where she was making a recipe that, that seems pretty similar to this one, but um, she had mentioned in that, in that video that she has a, strawberry vinegar recipe. So I'm gonna make sure to set aside the extra pieces that we cut off of these strawberries and we're gonna set those aside in the fridge for a later time where we're gonna figure out how to make these. And I'll bring you guys along for it if I do end up actually making that vinegar <laughs> or if I just throw it away to the chickens. But we're gonna give ourselves the opportunity to, to do it. So what we need to do is get our, oh, get our pot here. And then we're just, gonna guess here because this recipe calls for four cups of mashed strawberries but I'm gonna be doubling this recipe so um, I'm not sure how much of the, these I'm gonna need these are two pounds so I think I'm gonna go start out with two and oh gosh that does not look like it'll no we're gonna do we're gonna do all this Well, we're gonna do how much we can fit in my pot. So that's how much we're gonna do. We're gonna put a little bit of vinegar in there. Let it soak in this pot 
for, you know, five, 10 minutes or so, just kind of agitate it a little bit. Just make sure that we are getting it as clean as we can. And then we're just gonna go ahead and drain it off and then we'll start actually hulling these strawberries. And so I'll bring you back in about 10 minutes. And I'm just going to cut off the end pieces and put it in the pot. Um, we need to still measure these, but it says four cups of, ch of uh, mashed. So I'm gonna mash them in the pot and then dump them in my, my measuring uh, cup here and then put them back in the pot. Now that we have our eight cups of strawberries all mashed, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put it in our pot. We're not gonna turn it on yet. And then it says to mix in the calcium four teaspoons. And then we're gonna mix it up and heat is not on. Next, we're gonna make, we're gonna mix up the pectin mixture. And for that, it's kind of a little bit strange. I, when I first read this, I was, I just thought it was really bizarre procedure for doing it, but we're gonna follow the recipe as it is written. There are two ways that you can do that. Well, two ingredients that you can use. You can either use some kind of a juice or you can use water. I'm gonna go ahead and go with water just cause that's what I have and that's what's easiest for me. So that's what I'm gonna do. And it calls for three quarters of a cup of unsweetened, of water or unsweetened juice. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get a cup and a half, since we're doubling this recipe, we're gonna get a cup and a half of water and put it in the pot and bring it up to a boil. Okay, so we had our water came to a boil. We're gonna try and put it in a jar here. Very slowly. Don't wanna crack it. But I also don't wanna put hot water in plastic. Alright, so then we're going to add in our pectin, since we're doubling this recipe, we're going to do four. So the recipe says to add this uh, to either a, a container that you can use an immersion blender or to a blender. So I just chose to use this way. And we're gonna, it says to mix it for 10 seconds. And then after the 10 seconds, it says to scrape the sides and get all the chunks of the pectin off and mix it for one more minute. So then we're just gonna get this thing out of here, scrape it off and set that aside. The next step is just to bring this to a boil. So while this thing is heating up, we've got all of our canning tools that we need ready. We got our canning funnel, our debubbler, our jar lid lifter and just a surface to be able to put the funnel and stuff on so it doesn't get like icky. So basically we're just looking for this thing to get hot enough to where it comes to a boil that you can't stir down. And then once that happens, we're going to add the pectin to it, the pectin mixture to it and let it cook for one more minute and then that's it. You definitely wanna make sure that you are staying close here and stirring it pretty regularly while it's warming up. It can easily scorch on the bottom of the pot. Also, when it's getting up to this point where it's starting to boil, it's gonna have this foam on top and you want to get that off. You can lessen it, I guess, if you use butter. I think we have reached the optimal stage here. So now we're gonna add the pectin and cook it for one minute. Timer here ready. Okay, so we're gonna bring it up to a boil and then as soon as it starts to boil, we're gonna bring it back up to a boil. And then as soon as it starts to boil again, we're gonna cook it for one minute. The cooking process is done. And so now we're going to go ahead and start ladling this into the jars. Be careful when you are cooking this. I forgot how, it's been a long time since I made any jam. And I forgot like, I would burnt the crap out of my hands. This stuff splattered all over me. So uh, just make sure you were wearing some kind of a glove or something like that towards the end. I grabbed, I remembered I grabbed one of those oven gloves and put those on because it hurts. <laughs> So we have the jars over there in the pot and they are still hot. 
but they're not, it's not still turned on. I think it, it might be able to be, I don't know. So anyways, we're just gonna take our pot here and we're gonna ladle it into our jars, quarter of an inch of headspace. bubbling here real quick. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a paper towel, dip it in some vinegar, and we're gonna wipe the rim. And that's gonna get any uh, like sugar particles that could be on there, see, all that. And get any of the actual, like the physical particles that could interrupt, interfere with the seal. Okay, so then we're gonna put our lid on there and we're gonna put the Put the rim on there, blah, blah, blah. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the ring, we're gonna put it on here, fingertip tight. And that's as tight as you can reasonably get it with these three fingertips. So you basically, this is really hot, so. So then you're gonna take it and as tight as you can get it, just like that. It's, you're not cranking it on there. If you put it on there too tight, then you risk the lids buckling. Basically, you need it to be able to let the air out, and if it can't let the air out, it will force the air out. So, fingertip tight and into your hand. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bring you in close, and I'm gonna show you what I'm doing up close and personal, and we're just gonna bust through the rest of these. All right, so we have all the ones that we are gonna be able to do in here. We ended up getting nine of these half pints out of it. So I turned the heater, the, the heater, I turned the burner up to high. We're gonna bring this up to an absolute boil when it is completely boiling. We're gonna set our timer for 10 minutes. When that 10 minutes is up, we are gonna turn the heater off and take the heater. We're gonna turn the burner off and then we're gonna take the lid off and then we're just gonna let it set for five minutes. And then when that five minutes is up, we're gonna kinda, we're gonna start to take the jars out of the water here. So the canning process is completely done. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave it on the counter for 24 hours. And then after that 24 hours is up, we wanna make sure it's undisturbed. We wanna keep it away from any kind of like a heavy draft or anything like that. So we can just, and you wanna space them out. And then when the, that time is up, when the 24 hours is up, we can go ahead, we can remove the rings and we can wash them and put them into storage. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I will bring you back later on when I'm, and we can do a bit of a taste test in a couple of days and just make sure that the, um, just make sure it gelled. So we'll see you then. We found this recipe back in the, um, uh, whatever month six is. We filmed this back in June of 2021. It is currently February of 2022, the beginning of February, February 1st to be specific. And you guys are gonna see this video in a couple of days from now, so I'm super excited. I filmed this video last year and knowing that it was the end of strawberry season, so it didn't seem very bright for me to publish this video back then. So I figured I would go ahead and save this video until like a month or so, two before we get to actually strawberry season so people can kind of plan, get their canning recipes in order and be ready to make some delicious, no sugar, strawberry jam. So we are gonna go ahead and give this one a try. I have had this and it is quite delicious. It's a little bit on the acidic side because I didn't put any sugar in here at all. So I brought along 
some accompaniments that I'm going to give you some examples of some things that we can do with this after we get this thinking taste test for you. Okay, here we go. Strawberry jam time. There we go. Mmm, smells like strawberry jam. It's delicious. Okay, got some strawberry jam here. I have tasted this before. I know it's pretty good. Mmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so it kind of just tastes like a bland strawberry. When you are canning these strawberries, I think it is hugely important what type of strawberries that you actually use. I use the ones at Costco. They were a little bit later in the season and I kind of feel like they weren't quite ripe enough when I canned them. So, Note for the future, make sure I'm using super ripe, ripe strawberries when I'm actually doing this process. So I know a lot of people like to can their stuff with sugar in it, and I do not like to can my stuff with sugar in it. Uh, the reason for that is that it's just more versatile when you don't add the sugar to it. You just have the pure ingredients uh, I'm probably gonna end up making some just straight strawberry preserves without any sugar, without any pectin in it. My friend Julie over at Rowan Co. Farms, she cans this stuff. We were just talking about it today. She cans this stuff and uses it to sweeten her kombucha. And I was like, oh, I have some sugar-free, um, sh she specifically said sugar-free and pectin-free, and I was like, oh, I have some sugar-free jam. And hence the, uh, you know, <laughs> This kind of popped into my mind. I was like, oh, I need, to, I need to post that. I need to finish that video up. So here we are. But anyway, so she had mentioned that you can't really use it with the pectin in it because it turns into like a gelatinous goop. I think that sounds awesome. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like I think that sounds delicious. Like like we're talking like a, like a gelatin strawberry kombucha, like come on, like it's, it's like a jello. Like, I think it sounds delicious, but I mean, maybe it's not that particular texture. Maybe it's a little bit of a lighter texture, but when I heard that, I thought it sounded delightful. So I'm probably gonna give that a try when I get my kombucha starter going back up. The first thing that we really like to do is you can take, you can take cream cheese, and you can, okay, so you can take the crackers, you can dip it in cream cheese, and then dip it in, um, uh, strawberries. That is a really great dessert. You can also use it as kind of a topping for pancakes, waffles. You can do both regular, you can do gluten-free. Honestly, you could even do like chaffles. You could put this on top of it because this is pretty darn low carb. Um, I, let's see, the kombucha, I already talked about. Same, you can do the same thing with water kefir. When I get my starters going on that, I'm totally gonna try it, as well as I am coming up here in the very, very near future, gonna be starting to make milk kefir, and I'm totally gonna try adding this to the milk kefir. And then also, along those same exact lines, yogurt. This would make a great topping for yogurt. And you can even add some kind of sugar-free sweetener to it. This is monk fruit. I also have these here, different flavors of monk fruit, a little liquid sweeteners, and then just some plain stevia. Then you can also add this as just a sweetener flavor flavoring to oatmeal, as well as cream of wheat. One thing that I thought of was when I saw our um, almond milk and macadamia milk and things like that, you could totally make a strawberry milk with it. Or a milkshake, you could add it into like ice cream or something like that if you really don't care about it. You could top it on top of like a keto ice cream. The possibilities are kind of endless with this, especially when you can it without sugar because berries are pretty much low carb. And these ones you do have to be careful with them. You can't just have like an entire jar in one sitting, but you can have it as a, a nice flavor addition to whatever you're, you're, you happen to be consuming. Anything else? Oh, you could also add it to a smoothie. You could add it to a lot of different types of cakes or pies that you might be cooking. Especially, I think it would be really good if you're making some kind of like a coffee cake. You can make like a strawberry coffee cake. You could, um, like those cakes that you kind of roll out and then you roll it, like you roll it out flat and then you kind of roll it up into like a log. You could, you could frost the inside of it with that. Uh, you could put it in muffins or cupcakes or anything like that. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you do, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. It's a huge encouragement to me and it's also a big help to this channel. And right down here, there's gonna be a little button that's gonna pop up. You're gonna wanna click that one to subscribe to this channel. Up here is gonna be a video that Google says that you are gonna enjoy. This one is another fruit, fruit, fruit uh, canning recipe. And then up here is my entire canning playlist. All the things that I've canned since I began my journey on YouTube. So enjoy this video and we'll see you next time. Bye.